Let's talk about this a little bit more with Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler. Congressman Reschenthaler is a member of both the House Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees and an Iraq War veteran. And I promise, Guy, that'll be the last time I call you Congressman Reschenthaler. We'll call you Guy from here on out as you prefer. We Thank appreciate you, that. Thank you. So, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, doing what House Speaker Nancy Pelosi does, calls the commutation, quote, an act of staggering corruption and a threat to our national security. She also told CNN the House Democrats are going to propose a bill to make presidential clemency illegal. Here she is. That we will have legislation that says a president cannot commute or pardon uh, or offer clemency to anybody who commits uh, a crime, is convicted uh, of a crime uh, that affects the president's behavior and his culpability. Guy, I apologize. This is a serious question, but I have to ask this. When do you think the last time Nancy Pelosi read the Constitution? A, probably a long, long time ago, John, judging by how she interprets the Constitution. But uh, where was Nancy Pelosi when Bill Clinton pardoned his own brother for a cocaine charge? I'd like to know that. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the president basically has absolute pardon of, uh, you know, authority based on what's written in the Constitution. But the other problem here with Democrats is, you know, they, they've, they've gone back to this well so many times of impeachment. And the way Nancy Pelosi talks in that interview with CNN is she acts as if the impeachment inquiry is still going on. Well, in their mind, they're still fighting through impeachment because they put so much behind the Russian uh, hoax. They put so much faith into impeachment and everything is blown back on them. But let's let's just go and look at this from the start. You know, this whole this whole thing came because of Mueller's investigation, which found there was no obstruction and there was no collusion. So the entire investigation was a distraction. It wasted taxpayer dollars and it distracted from what the Trump administration was working on doing, which was uh, their agenda. So if we want to go back and look at the start of this, we, we can, and we can find that what you're going to see is, hopefully when the Durham report comes out, you're going to see that the FBI, the top echelon of the FBI, was spying on a, a political campaign, that they were spying on uh, the future president of the United States, that they entrapped I know entrapment is a legal term of art, but that they set up really Michael Flynn. Right. And if they can do that to an incoming president, they can do it to Michael Flynn. What can they do to the average Joe? Let's talk about Michael Flynn in a moment, but I want to stick with Robert Mueller for right now. In this op-ed that he wrote in the Washington yes. Post, quoting Mueller here, Russia's actions were a threat to America's democracy. It was critical that they be investigated and understood. We made every decision in Stone's case, as in all our cases, based solely on the facts and the law and in accordance with the rule of law. The men and women who conducted these investigations and prosecutions acted with the highest integrity. Claims to the contrary are false. Now, Senate Judiciary Committee Chair Lindsey Graham wants to call Mueller before his committee to testify. If you had a chance to question Mueller now, based on everything we know, specifically with the Flynn stuff, what would you like to ask? Well, John, I had a chance to interrogate Mueller when he came before the House Judiciary Committee, and I would go back to what I asked Mueller when he was before us, and that was I talked to him about ethics rules as a prosecutor. You know, as a prosecutor in Iraq, I was an attorney in the Navy. Prosecutors make a decision to either prosecute or not. What you saw Comey did, what you saw Mueller do, was completely inappropriate, and then they decided not to move forward with a prosecution, yet air all this dirty laundry. That, that is un-American, and I said it to Mueller when I was facing him in the Judiciary Committee, and I'll say it again. That, that is unethical, and it's un-American. If there's no evidence to move forward with a prosecution, you do not press forward with a report, and you, sim and you do not air dirty laundry. The bottom line is this. Mueller found in that report there was no collusion and there was no obstruction. End of story. And when he was testifying before me on the House Judiciary Committee, he thought it was really cute to say he was going to stay within the quote unquote four corners of the investigation. Hmm. Well, now, or the four corners of the report, now he, he opines in these op eds. So if he's going to venture from the four corners of the report, Lindsey Graham and the other senators on the Senate Judiciary Committee should go full throttle on him and expand the line of questions beyond the report because Mueller has now opened the door to that. Yeah, you wonder how much of this is a preemptive strike from Robert Mueller, knowing that the Durham investigation is pending and what we're going to learn about that coming out. Let's also talk about Michael Flynn. You, you mentioned his name here and what we talked about it, going throughout the last couple of weeks here, specifically with Flynn's case, is we learn more and more information that they knew, the FBI knew, that Michael Flynn wasn't a Russian asset and not a real suspect in this whole thing much earlier 
uh, than we thought. Flynn's legal team says newly released documents show, quote, shocking exculpatory evidence that there was no crime. And this is, again, compounding what we already know. So why do you think, Congressman, why do you think the FBI continued to pursue Michael Flynn knowing that he wasn't a Russian asset and they had this exculpatory evidence? I think it's because the FBI, at least the top echelon, were hell-bent on obstructing the Trump administration, doing whatever they could to gum up the works. And if you look at the notes with the, when the investigators went in to talk to them, they, they wanted to catch him in a lie, get him to resign, get him fired. Uh, they were trying to take on key members in the Trump administration. And this isn't that far-fetched. we got to remember that the lovers, Strzok and Page, were texting each other about getting insurance policies in the event that Trump, that Trump would win. So the, the FBI, at least again, the top echelon of the FBI, had been trying to gum up the works for the Trump administration since before he was even elected. And I could just say this, if, again, if they can do this to Flynn, what can they do to the average Joe? That escul esculpatory information should have been turned over to Flynn before, before he entered in that plea agreement. That's not by the law right now, but I was just on the phone with my colleague Kelly Armstrong from North Dakota. He's on the Judiciary Committee with me. We're looking at, we're looking at legislation that would make it, that would, that would require prosecutors to hand over exculpatory information before a plea deal is agreed to. Ooh, that would be huge. That's the type of criminal justice reform we should all get behind uh, when you look at some yes. of these situations. You know, I, I think that's certainly true, Congressman, that there was an aspect of obstruction uh, to the Trump agenda going on here. The other thing, too, when you look at this, I think it's hard for a lot of these FBI agents to believe that they got duped by Russia themselves, forced to kind of go down this rabbit hole because of what Russia does. They entice them with this information. They set up these meetings at Trump Tower. They got a lot of these investigators, you know, thinking that something was happening here that wasn't actually happening in the course of that, they broke the law themselves. Very, very challenging time for the FBI, and they got to recover. Congressman, great to see you as always. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, John.